Chico World International Berhad will be able to count Tycoon Tan Sri Kuek Lan Chan as a substantial shareholder once it goes public. Kuek will be acquiring up to 648 million shares, equivalent to a 27% stake in Eco World International via Singapore listed Guaco Land Limited. Eco World International's Executive Vice Chairman Tan Sri Liu Ki Sin said that having Guaco Land as a strategic shareholder would further enhance the property company's strong credentials. As for when Eco World International is planning to come to market, Liu says the first quarter of next year. The IPO price has not been fixed as it will be determined by book building process. In earlier reports, the group was aiming to raise some 2 billion ringgit from the listing. Kuala Lumpur Kepong Berhad's advances have been rejected by UK's MP Evans Group PLC. MP Evans said that shareholders representing an aggregate 54.72% of the company had committed to not accepting the unsolicited offer which they felt undervalued the company. MP Evans Chairman Peter Hatsley Chaplin called the offer highly opportunistic and wholly inadequate, explaining that it didn't reflect the existing value of the group's plantations nor the future value from its plans to increase its tax rate. A couple days ago, KLK had launched a bid to take over MP Evans at 642.25 pence per share, causing share price to spike 45%. The Nandi National Berhad saw its fourth quarter net profit jump by 114% due to higher power sales as a result of the sweltering weather. Net profit came in at 1.8 billion ringgit compared to 820.9 million ringgit for the previous year's corresponding quarter, thanks in part to the stronger ringgit and lower LNG prices. However, top line declined marginally by 4.3% to 11.2 billion ringgit due to higher amount of over recoverability of ICPT recognized during the quarter. The good earnings were powered by strong electricity demand which grew by 4% during its financial year, in particular from March to May due to the warm weather. On a full year basis, revenue rose 2.8% to 44.5 billion ringgit, while net profit grew 21.3% to 7.4 billion ringgit. Looking ahead, Tenaga President and CEO Dr. Sri Azman Muhammad expects electricity demand to keep increasing in tandem with the country's economic growth. Tenaga said it also recognizes the limitations of the domestic market and acknowledges the need to go further afield. The power provider also declared a final single tier dividend of 22 cents per share. Malaysia Airports Holdings Berhad saw its third quarter net profit plunge by 84% due to the lack of a couple of one-time gains it saw last year. Net profit came in at 10.68 million ringgit compared to 68.5 million ringgit a year ago. While in contrast, revenue rose 5.7% to 1.08 billion ringgit from 1.02 billion ringgit in the previous year's corresponding quarter. According to MAHB, barring last year's one-off gains and associated finance costs, profit before tax actually improved by 47.6% or 88 million ringgit. However, its overseas operations losses deepened by 68.2%, mainly due to losses at its Turkey operations. On the upside, MHB said its passenger movement for domestic and international sectors in Malaysia saw its highest growth during the quarter and expects passenger growth for the fourth quarter to outperform the rest of the year due to better load factors and increased airline seat capacity. As people continue to look for answers in the wake of the tragic hospital Sutana Amina fire, the government said it has no plan to suspend hospital support services concessionaire Medivest in Jamberhat while investigations are ongoing. According to Deputy Health Minister Datuk Sri Hilmi Yahya, this was to avoid disrupting hospital support services provided by Medivest. However, Hilmi said Medivest could be imposed with a penalty or other external action if found to have not complied with obligations set by the concession agreement. Medivest provides support services at 12 hospitals in Johor, 6 hospitals in Negeri Sembilan, and 3 hospitals in Malacca. All in all, the contracts for all the hospitals were estimated to cost 350 million ringgit, and the concession is due to end in 2025.